In order to discuss the Schrodinger equation and the operators for the rigid rotor, let's now discuss spherical polar coordinates. So most of the videos that we have done thus far have focused on Cartesian coordinate systems, that is functions of x, y, and z, things which are in three uh, rectilinear perpendicular axes. So in each of these dimensions, you can have x have a value from minus infinity all the way to infinity, same thing for y, same thing for z. So, and these uh, are orthogonal to each other, they don't, they don't intermix. And these are very useful for describing things in just three-dimensional spatial coordinates where uh, displacements in position are the natural unit to talk about. Alternatively, we can look in a coordinate system which also has three spatial uh, coordinates, but which is in a spherical polar system. And that's the system on the right here where we would describe a position in space by its radius, r, from the origin, its polar angle from the what would be the z-axis in Cartesian directions from the polar axis here, its angle away from, from that uh, axis, and similarly its, ax its angle away from something we call the azimuth or an azimuthal angle phi here. So these values uh, do not follow the same type of trend of x, y, and z. They have certain restrictions placed on them. Now r, the distance from the origin, that can be any finite value. So that is greater or equal to greater than or equal to zero and somewhere between there and infinity. So it can't be a negative value, it can only be a positive value because it is an absolute magnitude for a distance. Similarly, uh, the polar angle theta goes from a, a minimal value of zero where you're on the polar axis in the positive direction to a value of pi radians where you're on the polar axis in the negative direction. So kind of this blue arc here is showing the possible values of theta all the way from zero to two pi. And finally we have uh, phi or phi, whichever you say, I'm not sure which is correct, um, is going to be this azimuthal angle, this angle from this axis which is in some uh, plane where we project the particle's position into this uh, circular plane here. And this can take on values all the way from 0 to 2 pi, 2 pi radians of course being all the way around a circle. So 0 would just be on the axis here, pi over 2 would be 90 degrees in, pi is 180 degrees in, uh, 3 pi over 2. And then once you get back to 2 pi, you are back at the axis again, you're back at the origin. So we restrict the values to always be somewhere between 0 and less than 2 pi. If once, as soon as it gets to 2 pi, it becomes 0 again. So we represent particles in this coordinate system as a, as a function of r, theta, and phi. So you can interconvert between these two coordinate systems uh, using the types of definitions you could derive the results I've got here where x equals r times sine theta times cosine, this should not be theta, this should be phi, as my color system would be suggesting. So let's turn these into phi. Okay, so x is r sine theta cosine phi, y is equal to r sine theta sine phi, noticing the difference between being the cosine and the sine in the plane there. And z is just r cosine theta r and then the cosine that it makes with the z-axis, which is our polar axis there. And we can, and in this case, we're assuming x to be our azimuthal axis. And r is just the distance between two Cartesian points, if we view the origin as one point and our position as another point. So that's just, we can do the Pythagorean theorem and find that that's x squared plus y squared plus z squared all to the one half, so square root of that. And similarly, if you derive through all these relations, you'll arrive at the, the two final identities I have here, that theta equals the arc cosine of z over r, where r is defined in terms of these three Cartesian coordinates, and phi is equal to the arc tangent of y over x. That's similar to uh, just the 2D polar coordinate system. Okay, so this is going to be useful to us for the rigid rotor because for the rigid rotor, what we have is a constant value of r for some rotating system where we had some bond where we have, say, m1 here as we had for 
the harmonic oscillator system where we were looking at a vibrating bond now we're looking at a rotating bond so now our bond distance as this molecule rotates is going to be fixed at this value L so our R is a fixed value of L and then the other values in space that we can take on are just going to be uh, anywhere in the angular space so since the R position is, is fixed we can be anywhere in this range of 0 to uh, pi for theta and 0 to 2 pi for phi so our wave function which in principle would be a psi of r theta and phi if we had whatever if we were describing the center of mass position of this diatomic molecule it reduces to just a wave function which depends on theta and phi so it can rotate in this azimuthal plane here and it can also rotate around for any degree in this polar axis as well so this is what we're going to look at. We're going to look at a wave function which depends on theta and phi for the rigid rotor. And we're going to see what type of operators pop out when we look at a coordinate system like this and how we can get solve the Schrodinger equation to get wave functions and energy levels for this system.